Today's video wasn't actually planned, um, it was going to be a hollow form, and no I didn't go blow the sides out, I haven't ruined it. Um, this is said hollow form, that's just a bung in the top there, because it's still drying, um, to, to try and minimise the amount that the hole will actually um, distort. However, um, this is a very basic shape, I haven't finished the shape or anything yet, but there are quite a few hairline cracks and a few bigger cracks around the top there where it, where it was on, on the log. Um, and I thought what I'd do is my usual sort of coffee grind, CA glue, etc. And then I got thinking maybe I'd like to bead it. Uh, and I wasn't sure. Um, and the bung is, is just a practice thing. It, it, it's <laughs> Don't worry about that. That's not going to be on the end product. However, um, because of work commitments, I couldn't carry on and finish this. So I, I say put a bung in the end and uh, hopefully it, it won't distort too much. As luck would have it, um, the day after I left this, I got in the house. Uh, I was in the house and the wood turning, my monthly wood turning magazine dropped on the mat. And as luck would have it, Pat Carroll, who was an Irish turner, had a, a great article on a box which he did. And that box uh, included um, beading around the outside to hide the join of the box. Um, and it was done with a homemade beading tool. And that's what the subject of today is going to be. The problem, and I'll go into a closer uh, detail very briefly, there is um, a 6mm um, purchase beading tool. The problem is, there, as you can see there, there is quite a gap, uh, uh, quite a distance between the outside of the tool and where you form the bead. So you get quite a valley, uh, quite a distance between the beads on these. Um, not a huge problem, but they don't look quite as nice as a, a half form bead almost, um, with, with, with shallower wings on the side. So, out of a 3.8 spindle gouge, in actual fact, Pat Carroll uh, did it out of a 6mm, which I will do today, out of a quarter inch um, spindle gouge, that's what I'll be showing you my method of doing it. Um, I had a couple of 3.8 uh, spindle gouges which have uh, virtually had no flute left, and I always keep them, uh, because you never know when you're going to need something. And I decided I'd practice with that. So here I produced from a uh, a 3.8 spindle gouge, um, a 7mm beading capability, if you like. Um, and I also did another on a practice piece, which is an old uh, draper tool, which I picked up on eBay. But the problem, <laughs> this is many years ago, four or five years ago now, but the problem with it is that the, the flute is actually twisted. But this doesn't matter for this, so I, I never, well I used it, but I replaced it after a while. Um, so I've done it with that, and that also gives a 7mm bead. So what I intend to do is show the process I've employed to obtain these. And the big thing with these is, um, and I will actually do it for you, but you can see there how, how tight the beads are, um, rather than having a big gap. So that's what I'm going to do today, and um, I hope you find it of interest. And of course then the more engineering-minded of you will have different ideas, but it's just to give you the theory behind it, and the way I've done it, and uh, any suggestions to improve the technique would be greatly appreciated. Okay, so he here we are at close-up. Um, this is a, um, a chrome beading tool. Now as you can see, it's a full bead, and that would be just there is the base of the bead, is the bottom of the valley if you like, and there is quite a distance between where the bead ends and the side of the tool. So that creates a, um, a valley if you like, and quite a wide valley. On this side is the shop made uh, beading tool, a 3 8 beading tool, out of a, a 3 8 spindle gouge. And as you can see, the tips here are where the bead would be formed. And I've put a bit of relief here, so in actual fact, that is the width of the bead. And the next bead, so they're very tight, as opposed to being part a little bit too far, for my liking. So that is the difference between the, um, the bought beading tool and the homemade one. 
So what we're trying to achieve is to go from that profile of the ordinary spindle gouge to that profile. Um, that there is a little bit of uh, hand relief work, if you like, on the side, which I've got to refine that. But you can see from the side it's snub-nosed. And here you can see the profile that I've achieved. And that will be the um, profile of the bead. There we go. Okay, so that's the theory behind it, and um, I'll go over to the grinder now and show you the method that I used. There's a gouge in this position, and as I say, you're taking off the nose first, and this is at um, just under 60 degrees. So hopefully there you can see the profile of the bead, which is the flute, the profile of the flute. So the aim is to go back until we've got a complete bead of the profile of the flute. So I'll just keep doing that until we've achieved it. Okay, we're there. I'll zoom in. Of course with this gouge it's much easier because there's not so much steel. Okay, so now you can see we've got the profile of the of the bead. It's already relieved because I've done it, um, I've taken away from the nose downwards, so the swept back wings give the relief. So we'll go over to a piece of cherry and we'll see how it performs. All right, so I've got a bit of cherry here and um, you need to be cutting just below center height and you use the tool this way you turn it onto its flute and you use that as a fulcrum and we'll make some score lines uh, turning it around 1300 revs so we'll do three beads one line there one there and one there. Okay, so let's form the bead. A little bit of a wiggle either way. Now doing it from where I'm doing it, there's a bit of a worm <coughs> worm track there, but don't worry about that. With practice you can get a really good finish and as you can see, also you can see how close the beads are. Now what I'll do now is use the 3 8 which gives a 7 mil bead. Same idea on the flute. And we'll make some marks here. One, two. Okay, slight wiggle. Round that one a little bit there. If I do one more here, for the worm tracks, a nice finish as well. And now I'll use the, the 
the bought beading tool okay now that needs to come up a little bit the tool rest because this is more of a scraping action but it'll show you the difference in the appearance I'll do that over here okay and you do that this way down with the bevel and you push in and move from side to side so we'll do one there and one there okay One formed. Two. We'll do one more so it's even. Okay, so what, I, what I've done here, I've just put some pe uh, pencil marks here to separate the three different types of beads. That was done with the small quarter inch beading tool nice and tight very small valley there as you'd expect because it's a very small tool and then the 3 8 spindle gouge converted to the that little heel there is because i haven't finished grinding because i had a different angle there and as i say i found about 60 degrees to be a great angle um, again nice and tight and the shop bought one the crown beading tool as you can see has got quite a, uh, a gap between the beads. Now the other thing, with care you can get a fairly good finish with the um, with the other bead with, with the shop board beading tools, but it does tend to tear out. You've got to be very careful. The other thing with the uh, three eighths and quarter inch spindle gouge is converted to a beading tool. Uh, very clean surface. Um, I'm always very impressed with that. It does take a bit of practice to get the right angles uh, to approach the work etc but it does give a good finish and uh, this is the one I'm hoping to apply to the hollow form. Well I hope you found that of some interest and it gives you some food for thought to go away and produce your own shop made beading tool. The main advantage I found was the tightness of the, uh, the beads. It looked really good, in my opinion. However, relatively easy to, make, uh, to, to produce, but always be mindful that you're producing heat because you're moving quite a bit of steel away um, from relatively narrow uh, steel, so it's going to heat up. You don't want to blue it, otherwise you lose the temper. So keep, keep quenching it until you get the desired shape you want. And play around with the angles. Um, the, the, the bevel angle, I found I started off with a really sheer um, bevel angle and that was no good at all. And I found that basically around the 60, 60 to 70 degree mark, uh, almost like a scraper if you like, although it does shear, it doesn't scrape, it does actually shear the wood. So it gives a nice finish as I showed you. However, a massive thanks to Pat Carroll once again for inspiring me to make my own beading tools uh, and also for a possible way I might finish this hollow form um, when I finish the video and put it up next time. Uh, thank you very much indeed for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you very soon. Cheers now.